All right, let's move on to our next game. Yes, we're gonna have lots of space games. All right, this is Space Fever. Still in the arcades. Most of these are clones of Space Invaders, obviously. So this is Space Fever in color. Far East Video Incorporated. So another Japanese advertisement flyer. And there's our cocktail cabinet. PCB, and yes, controls are left, right, and fire. And it looks like this one was programmed in color. We got uh, just various other versions, so let's take a look. We're stepping into the arcades playing Space Fever in the arcades in 1979. All right, I'm gonna put a quarter in. Oh yeah, it looks just like Space Invaders. Push one player button. Hey, we got some sound though. Every other game we played has been uh, pretty quiet. All right, so game select. Looks like we got game eight, three different versions, but slightly variations, I'm sure. If you can tell by the colors, it is using one of the first color graphics you could do in the arcades. So it's doing more than the original Space Invaders, but this one's basically the same. And simple sound effects, we don't have the cool thumping that Space Invaders does that gives you the tenseness, but it's the, the bass is at the bottom too. All right, all right, Space Fever, we got it. Yeah, from the chat, Casey Cloak Kirby said, yeah, it's a straight copy of Space Invaders. So we're gonna go ahead and give that one two and a half because it's, it's just so simple. It's it's what we'd expect for the time, but they're trying to get on the, the, the Space Invaders string. All right, next is Space Fever High Splitter, which is the, okay, it's the same game, but now you split the characters in two. By the same company? No. Ladies and gentlemen, by Nintendo. Did you know Nintendo made Space Fever High Splitter? All right, let's put a quarter in. Okay, yeah, it's the same idea. So it's what we just played, but now they split. So the, the alien split into two pieces. And slightly different sound effects, but it's pretty much the same as Space Fever. Okay, we, we, we've seen, we, we got the idea. It's, it's pretty much Space Invaders. So uh, for star rating, we're gonna give it the same, uh, two and a half for Space Fever High Splitter. <laughs> and from the chat, Casey Club Kirby goes, yes, something new. Splitting enemies in two is cool. Isn't it enough to bump it up though? Uh, I don't know, it's still pretty much a two and a half. All right, moving on to our next game. This is Space Fighter Mark II. And as far as images, it looks like we don't have any artwork for this one. Yeah, we just have the controls for it. All right, so let's see what any, no, no, no other versions, no manual. It is, okay, so this is Data East's Space Invaders copy. Uh, Space Fighter Mark II. And yes, first game we've ever seen on the show that plays with Japanese text. I do not know if they had kanji in any other games before this, at least that we've seen. Because in the arcades, we played plenty of games from Japan, like Taito and Namco, but they have not had the text on the screen. So that's the first we've seen it. And yes, Space Invaders, clone all the way. We have uh, no sound still for this one. Everybody wanted to be Space Invaders. Yes, I agree. Casey Club Kirby said from the chat because it was so popular, so influential. All right, let's give that one. Uh, because of nothing really original, uh, we'll do the same. Two and a half. It's not exactly average, but just a little below average. All right, so our next space game. Oh, yeah, Space Gorilla. Looking slightly different. Let's take a look at the artwork for Space Gorilla. There we go. Now, notice that most of these space games are, at least the advertisement flyer we're seeing, is from Japan. And that's because when Space Invaders was first released in 78 in Japan, Taito, uh, because it took the world by storm, a lot of companies now have become companies because of Space Invaders. So not only is Space Invaders influential from a video game standpoint, but it is creating companies because other people that dealt in electronics or toys saw how popular it was in Japan and said, well, we can do that and we'll just make another shooter that uh, cashes in. 
And there's an example of the arcade uh, cocktail cabinet. Yes, the controls are the same. Move left and right and fire. So this is Space Gorilla. We got um, slightly more advanced uh, artwork, at least pixel art. No manual, so we're doing it blind. This is Space Gorilla, released sometime in 1979 in the arcades in Japan. And there we go. Awesome artwork. That's right behind us. All right, let's put a coin in and see how different it is. So one player pushes button. Oh, you got some sound effects for the, the beginning. And yes, I'm the ship at the bottom moving left and right. We have ship scrolling across the side. No sound effects for the gun though. And it might've been coming from a different location on the arcade cabinet. But um, the same idea, more advanced pixel art for the bottom. And we do have a star field in the background that's blinking. So yeah, doing something a little different. But if you, as, as you can see, it's, oh, we have a, oh, cool. We have a, a different mode and a sh another ship came down. It removed my protection and then started a, like a different round or um, a, a different a gameplay mode. And then, okay, we got a missile that goes across the top. That's awesome. Okay, so this is Space Gorilla. This is doing something a little different. And it's uh, fun knowing that you don't know when the, the other game mode is going to come up. Yep, here we go. <laughs> With the sound effects, but where did they? Oh, oh man, he's, he, yeah, he's fast. He shoots quick too, so you gotta be ready. At least I'm dodging the bullets. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right. So from the chat, Casey Club Kirby said, "Yeah, graphics are cool, pleasing to look at," and I agree. All right. So that was definitely average. I'm gonna go ahead and give that one a three star. Something we'd expect. From 1979, let's let's bump it up to three and a half because uh, that one's doing something a little bit more than what we've seen and better graphics than what we've seen. So three and a half for Space Gorilla. All right, kick it up. The next space game. Oh man, this is the most cl cloned uh, Space Invaders we've ever seen. This is Space King Two. It's gonna be a bootleg. All right, we're in the arcades in 1979 playing Space King Two. Who knew we'd see so many clones of Space Invaders? All right, so it's showing us the score from the beginning, and let's go ahead and put a quarter in because we kind of have the idea. <laughs> We're going to play every Space Invaders clone. The only place on Chronologically Gaming to see every Space Invaders clone. So this is Space King 2, and this is the exact thing. It is in color, but we saw Space Invaders Part 2 in color. It is, it is the same exact game. Uh, no different, plays exactly the same. This might be a copy to the point that they just literally copied the PCB. So we're going to go ahead and give that one, because of the bootleggedness, I'm going to give it one and a half. Sorry, Space King 2, you don't fool me. 